Hey folks, welcome to another edition of the Alan Parks Project. You know, I think I've done some stuff with bass, um, and I play bass most of the time, but some of you know I'm a tuba player as well. Tuba is a fun instrument. I really enjoy playing tuba. I hope to do more tuba-oriented videos coming up pretty quick. I've got a couple of ideas, but I'm going to start with a fun kind of idea for tuba. Um, I call this Stupid Tuba Tricks. And maybe I'll show you some stuff on trombone too. Uh, first of all, my horn is a Miraphone. This is a double B flat Miraphone Paranet. It's kind of their, uh, I think it's their kind of student three quarters ish. It's about a seven eighth size tuba. So it's kind of smallish. I got it because it was easy to carry around and it's a Miraphone and it plays really well. I really like it a lot. It's a very nice horn. This is my main tuba. My only other tuba at this point being an, uh, a 109 year old E flat tuba. <laughs> I'm really not going to use much. Um, so anyway, stupid tuba tricks. Now, these are things that I mostly do them to keep myself amused. Um, the first one is I got from old Spike Jones albums. And I'm not talking about Spike Jones, the movie director. I'm talking about Spike Jones and his city slickers. Did uh, comedy novelty music in the 30s and the 40s. He had a trombone player who did something that I've heard referred to as a funk. F-O-N-K, okay? And it's this funny sound. Can you hear that okay? So he would throw those noises in occasionally, and I somehow managed to learn how to do that. And I'm gonna show you how to do it too. Why, I don't know, that's up to you. So first of all, I find it easier to do on lower pitch notes so I'm using a low B flat just because it's open and it's easy and it's right there. That's the one that I developed it on. And as you're playing the note, you want to do kind of what it sounds like. And in the cavity of your mouth with your tongue, um, form the syllable oi, basically saying oi as you play, pushing your tongue forward and keeping it firm at the sides of the tongue. Oi, e, ending up with an E. So starting with an oi sound. That's the basics of doing it. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, I've <laughs> got some of my high school tuba students have learned it. So you can just rip a nice one off once in a while and cracks people up. I actually will use it once in a while in trad jazz solos, Dixieland solos, just to see if everybody's paying attention or if they're off having a, a chat, which is usually what happens during the tuba and bass solos. So there you go. That's the funk. Next one is called multiphonics. Multiphonics is a technique on a, well, on a horn of playing your note, but humming a note at the same time. So you're kind of playing a little chord with yourself. I'm not really good at it because I'm not a terribly good singer and I'm concentrating more on playing my tuba than I am on singing. But it, you can play around with it. So it's, uh, it's the sound I'm making while I play a note using the same little B flat. You know, tell my voice is close to that B flat. It goes in and out of tune causing beats. Well, but you can sing chords. for a lot of god-awful sounds. Now there's guys that will go out there and actually be able to do uh, musical things with it. I'm not really quite at that point. I just use it to goof around with. A uh, person that does it, there's some on um, Howard Johnson, the tuba player, Howard Johnson's first album, Gravity. And I first heard it done by Bill Watrous, the trombone player at a clinic I went to in uh, in high school jazz band at a jazz festival. And it was pretty interesting stuff. So multiphonics. Okay. Annoy your friends. The other one I'm going to show you is just actually the basis for beatboxing. I haven't really worked up any beatboxing. I'm going to have to sit down and figure it out. But you've got a few sounds that are great for beatboxing. A lot of these sounds are available in a book by a tuba player named John Sass, S-A-S-S. -S, and 
he uses different syllables, tu, ku, ka, ta, and, and the like. And you can get some different sounds. Can... And what you want to do is you want to get your embouchure to vibrate a little bit. Okay, so that's like a single flap of the lips. And you can also make uh, sort of kissing noises. And you can make, if you do that into the mouthpiece, you get that. And if you push your tongue in and out really fast like a piston, you can put them together, see if I can do it. So, not a lot of use. But it's there, and you can put together a, a, a beatboxing. You know, how funky can a 55 year old tuba player be, right? So, anyway, there you go. Stupid tuba tricks. What you do with them is your problem. Now, let's see what we can do with trombone. Okay, then. So, now I've got my trombone for a stupid trombone trick. Some of the stuff you can you can do with the trombone as well as tuba. Um, thonks. As a matter of fact, I think they sound a little bit better um, on trombone. Okay, you can do the multiphonic. As I said, I first heard Bill Watrous, a trombone player, doing those. And you can make the beatbox noises too. Okay. Now, the thing is, is, if you do that squeaky, squeaky, squeaky one back and forth real fast, it actually works a little bit faster on the horn. <laughs> on the trombone. Because it's smaller, right? Okay, so one that I find pretty unique to trombone is the airplane flying overhead. So this involves a lot of air and a lot of patience and being able to open your embouchure for a different tone suddenly. Okay, so here we go. Let's see if I can get this one right. Okay, I've done better. Let me try another one. Um, sometimes it's open, it's better with more airy tone. Sorry about that. So involved is a crescendo and a decrescendo, a glissando, using your ears to hear how long you want that Doppler effect to last, and um, and opening your embouchure so you get a more widespread diffuse kind of a tone. So what good is it to be able to make all of these noises on an instrument? Okay, well, you can make people laugh. That's always fun. But the um, probably the lesson to be learned from it is how to change your tone, how to manipulate your tone. The more you can manipulate your tone, the more you can concentrate on getting a good tone, making it for a better tone. Try different things. Try opening your jaw, closing it, aiming your airstream downwards, upwards, push your jaw forward, pull it back. Those are how you get um, high notes and low notes. Try positioning your tongue in different places. Mostly you want to get it out of the way so you can get some air into the instrument. Um, you also don't want to close your jaw up too much because you want to get air into the instrument. And sometimes those little things will clear up a person's bad tone. And uh, most importantly, use lots of air. Always use more air. That's most problems on a wind instrument can be fixed with more air, it seems like. So there's the lesson. Play with your tones. See what you can come up with. See what kind of uh, different sounds you can make, how many tones you can make. Um, for instance, if you're playing in an ensemble and suddenly you have a solo, well, it might help to put a little bit of edge on your tone so it pop pops out a little bit more, especially on tuba, which tends to get buried down into the mix a little bit. So those are the reasons that you should learn how to make stupid tubas and trombone sounds. Okay. See you next time. Bye. Oh. Hit like. Hit subscribe. Please. Okay? Groovy. See you later.